Hello, so I'm going to talk about uh, direct and indirect taxes. Um, and the reason why the reason why anyone, I guess, talks about things like these is when something hits them directly. And that is exactly what has happened uh, with me and people who I speak with of late. They feel that it's getting way too much. Uh, I have written certain points, uh, but since when I write certain points, I'm writing them so fast that it's hard to understand my own handwriting when I try to reread it. But I hope that I can, I can read it. Anyway, so let's start with point one. Uh, what is government for? A very basic, very rudimentary kind of a thing, but then that's important, I guess, at least in my head, it makes sense to start with something like this. So the point one is, what is government for? So while everybody is doing their own thing, there, you need an institutionalized body that would look after things that, that has a job profile, or its key area or key result area, is to look after things are managed on a larger scale like uh, people in the country are healthy they're relevant in terms of uh, they're well educated uh, it's just not literacy it's the desire to make optimum use of your potential uh, so that's education that is what education is for and government on a larger scale looks after that m most of the people or preferably everybody is educated and then uh, it facilitates your livelihood in terms of building physical infrastructure and then uh, hospitals uh, would be included in health and so on basically you get the idea right uh, and and of course your country is safe so you have a good uh, defense mechanism so that's point one that's what government is for Mostly, since you don't have CVs or screening systems, uh, these governments come into power by uh, capitalizing on your weak nerve, whatever the larger population gets triggered by, so they ride on it and they come into power. Uh, maybe because they don't have any other option if they say, see, this is the kind of degree we have we wouldn't be passionately swayed most of us so they they have to take refuge into uh topics which they later don't even want to talk about anyways they have come into power now how do they uh, garner uh, how did how do they arrange for money to run the system they arrange money to run the system majorly through taxes that's the commission right so in India, what happens? Only 7% to 8%, like really less uh, percent of people of Indian voters actually pay direct tax. So since there are two types of taxes, direct tax, which is levied on your um, income, if you're a salaried class, or you have a stable legal occupation, you give a certain part, 30 to 40% of it. Uh, to the government hmm uh, in some cases lesser okay and then since only seven percent of the Indian voters uh, pay taxes you ought to have some other uh, source of income when you when I say you it means the government so they uh, levy indirect taxes which is which is a part of uh, money that you pay for the goods and services that you buy. All right. So uh, ideally, ideally, most developed countries or fast emerging countries have a wider uh, tax base for the direct uh, tax. That is, more there are more people who pay uh, direct taxes like U.S. and the European nations, the UK, and Scandinavian countries like Norway. I mean, they all have it above 70%. And here, in our country, it is 7%, which is dismal. So ideally, what any government should do is to, is to raise the 
employment level raise employment level so that there are more and more people who are able to give you that commission that you're asking for but for whatever reason um, governments after governments they have not been able to raise the direct uh, tax base because they have not been able to uh, raise the employment le level um, Mm, which is sad <laughs> which talks about certain at certain level incompetence how come years and decades have gone and the employment level hasn't increased we'll talk about it in a while now talking about indirect tax so indirect tax in india is highest in the world it has slabs 5% 12% 18% 28% so no country has uh, that 28% uh, tax uh, rate, yes, no country has it. And indirect tax could be distortionary in a sense because uh, since if, if you have a high GST on anything, you'll go for something inferior which has lower GST. So basically all those inferior quality goods makers producers would produce would be uh, would get uh, reason to produce that inferior quality goods so your your gdp would have an inferior gdp inferior goods driven gdp growth and moreover your gdp growth would not be reflective of the needs and preferences and tastes of uh, a larger population it would be reflective of uh, what com finance commission has basically wanted you to like if most of the people are going for for something which has lower uh, tax rate on it how would it reflect the real taste and preference of the larger population it doesn't in the short run it is fine in the longer run it is not in the longer run, you are stuck in a rut. Fine. Uh, so there you go. Uh, so this is just not distortionary in one way. Plus, it also douses the consumption level. It also douses the consumption level because people are less enthused to buy in a country like India, where people like to buy things and that's why and we have such a large population and we most of us we have a large uh, margin of propensity to consume we like to consume things until we because people say when they reach a certain kind of an economic status before that they 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 buy things they consume out of their incomes so if you're going to douse the consumption level you're basically dousing the ag aggregate demand uh, because most of us, let's just say, uh, are what some of the happiest times is like buying things, even though it might not be good, it might be considered as an addiction, but it's a harmless addiction. Especially, I you know, talking personally, I love buying veggies when the vegetable market is clean. And thankfully, the place that I live in has a beautiful vegetable market, which is a big market very clean and then that's like this is this is a magical place because here you see the produce of the planet mm, yeah so a lot of good vibration going on there so i like it anyway so um so if you're going to douse the uh, demand it's not going to play very well and do you know that the uh, happiness index rank of India is 136 out of 146 countries that are part of this index. So that's not a good news for a very spiritual nation. Shouldn't we be supposed? Shouldn't we be? Aren't we supposed to be happier because we are a sp spiritual nation? No, we are. We are spiritual because nothing else is going our way so we take refuge into the most harmless and deep thing which is spirituality all right 
so we are not even talking about this was this was <laughs> the third point basically so the fourth point is uh, if we keep direct tax and indirect tax at bay for a while we are not even talking about certain key industries that the government has control over like petroleum natural gas lpg thing right so we don't even know what kind of uh, tax they are leaving on it so as they say that um, it would cost uh, i mean the kind of profit margin i wouldn't like to give wrong uh, numbers but i just heard that it is one cost one uh, one lpg cylinder would not cost more than uh, 100 rupees to the government uh, and it's just reaping on the economies of scale of the large setup they have already made so and we have to pay 1100 for it and so goes for petrol I mean, unim unimaginable profit margins. Anyways, so the fifth point is that whatever money comes in into the system, whatever money comes in you know, through indirect tax, direct tax, and other other uh, streams, why is it why is it not making changes for the longest time? I mean, COVID happened. It's once in a, once in many generation kind uh, kind of a event episode, but otherwise also generations after generations have gone, and why are we still stuck? It's like stuck in a time warp kind of a thing, black hole kind of a thing. Why aren't we ever becoming developed? Why are we always perennially emerging market, developing market? I mean, people doubt about the fact that we are fifth in fifth biggest economy but look at the per capita income the money is concentrated there is there is unimaginable inequality in the country let's what is that, that saying taking bull by its horn i mean let's just face things so let's just talk about it let's just be aware that doesn't mean we need to be depressed or say bad things to the government because government will not change plus minus few things largely everyone is the same so coming back to the point where is the money going the government said that it has no option but to uh, raise in direct tax to a ridiculous level because most of india's uh, rev government of india's revenue is going into servicing uh, interests for the loans it has taken mm. so you know uh, if you if you see what time the external debt r really uh, increased it really uh, soared up was between 2009 and 13 and 14 around that time anyway so why was any loan is suicidal that's the bottom line. Any loan that you take is pulling you into a trap. Until unless a part of it is spent, a large part of it is spent in uh, productive activities, in activities and investments which would have rate of return much higher than the interest that you have to pay. This is called debt service ratio, right? If you know about it already. Ideally, Indian companies, organization, or any um, any economic activity should be reaping eight times more money than the money that it has to pay for the interest. But if you if you spend, I'm talking about government of India. If you spend or oh, most of your foreign reserves not in development activities not in productive activities but in not in capital formation uh, but in uh, helping banks uh, have a handsome balance sheet because they are going into big losses 
so that you you give you pump in the money that's coming in from all directions to them so that they somehow can show that their balance sheet was tallied and they were not such a loss making uh, unit so you're basically throwing away the money because you want to show to people that you're not into deficits your banks are working fine so where the foreign reserves are going into helping the uh, RBI uh, not show so much loss but when it comes to individuals who had taken debts they have to pay even higher interest rates then forget about any respite uh, which is even which is even worse because we perhaps the only way they could things can be tad okay or be in control is to is to keep the interest rates low and inflation rate low but banks have raised even the interest rates so yeah this was the fifth point i guess so let me just wrap things up by this by the sixth point that um india spends a very dismal amount on uh, education and health mm, and there are many populist policies going on like like um even if an even as a top agriculturist agriculturist farmer okay is making in lakhs you would not tax them start taxing people all those farmers who are like stinking rich and you are taxing a person who's getting small amount 15000 per month kind of a thing you are taxing them but you are not taxing not even at subsid- lesser than other people even if the tax levels are lesser for agriculture people it's fine but you are not taxing them at all so they are taking things for granted and they are channelizing some of them their resources into into things like khalistan etc <laughs> and so uh, it's not that the government doesn't understand that uh, people you manufacture these conflicts on religion and stuff it almost seems like who cares when you go into market there are all kind of people from all walks of life from all caste and all sections of society and they are all struggling with the same thing why if you find them if you imprison them whoever makes ruckus it's it's going to come into control population has to come into control there are sources that we are going to uh, we are going to surpass china in population what a thing to surpass other countries in <laughs> yeah because the only way you can make uh, you can do good for yourself is to increase the gdp the real uh output the net output or you could decrease the number of people f- uh, who are feeding people populations bring population in control nothing is done about these two things either you increase on your income or you decrease the number of people who are living off that income right you can't decrease they can decrease on their on its own the the rate the growth rate but you're not doing anything about anything even the indirect tax just cut a nominal amount from everybody's accounts at the end of the year or beginning however or maybe in every quarter rather than taxing every little thing it's pretty much like a, if a certain small amount is going to the government we you, you wouldn't wouldn't feel the pinch it's pretty much like your lpg gas cylinder while it's going on you use it it's only you remember the how uh, expensive it is when you have to buy it for two months or one and a half months you're fine so just don't uh, tax them every day and make them more depressed this is just this is just what i'm the thing 
coming into my head uh you know it's not well thought over but there are people who can th think things over so yeah they were these were the six points maybe more than that uh yeah this was this is what i feel and i guess uh, things should improve if we want our country to improve in certain aspects right bye